Well, students, in the last class, we have introduced derivatives and also we have started our discussion on forwards. Today, we will continue our discussion on forward. If you recall, we have mentioned in our last class that our main aim is to find the strike price of the forward contract f of small t comma capital T. So in this class, we will state the formula for the strike price in a simple case where there is no extra cost involved in maintaining the asset. It means there may be some uh, basic cost involved in the asset. For instance, if the underlying asset is, for instance, rice, then one has to also take care of storing cost. Say, for instance, if you want to sell 100 kg of rice one month later and you issued a forward contract with your counterparty, then for the one month, you may have to store that 100 kg of rice somewhere and that storage cost also should be included in your strike price, right? Other instant is uh, the other way around. Like for instance, if you have written a forward contract uh, with the underlying asset as stock, then the stock during the contract period may give you dividends. The dividend has to be discounted in your formula. So there may be cost involved. So you have to add that cost into your formula or there may be some income which is generated through the asset which has to be discounted in the formula. Okay, This we will see later, but for time being, we will assume that there is no extra cost or income included in the underlying asset during the forward contract period. So therefore, the theorem that we are going to state on the strike price is under the assumption that there is no cost involved in it. That is, no cost forward pricing model is what we are going to present here. The first assumption is, suppose that the underlying asset has no extra cost. That is what I have explained now throughout the forward contract period. And the second assumption as I have mentioned in the last class, we assume that there is no arbitrage opportunity available in the market. Okay, that is the next assumption. And generally, we also assume that the market allows short trading, which is always there in the market. Then the forward pricing at any time is given by, that is F of T comma T. The capital T is the expiration time and small t is the present time. We have got the contract at t equal to 0 at the strike price of f of 0 comma t. And now as time evolves, the strike price changes for the given expiration. The formula tells you that how to get this strike price with respect to a prevailing riskless annual interest rate. Okay, so it is given by S of T. S of T is the spot price of the underlying asset and that is amplified like this. Okay, if you recall, this is the amplification factor with the prevailing interest rate being R per annum and this M is the frequencies that the bond or any uh, riskless investment pays the interest and N is the total number of investments that are remaining before the maturity. Okay. Suppose we have crossed one particular period and we are in the middle of the period and then we are finding this F, then one has to also take care of the accrued interest. So this is in the case of discrete compounding. In the case of continuous compounding, how it is given is your uh, presence underlying assets price amplified by this factor, which is uh, quite natural because you are assuming the continuous compounding between the time small t to capital T, the prevailing interest rate is R per annum. Therefore, you can easily guess how this formula is coming into picture here. Now, we have to prove that one can take this formula as a model for the strike price okay 
let's try to prove this theorem. We prove this theorem only for t equal to zero. For any t in the interval zero to capital T, the proof can be carried over in a similar way. Also, we will only consider the continuous compounding. We have to prove that f of zero comma capital T, why zero? Because I will prove this theorem only for T equal to zero. For general T, the idea is the same. Since we have taken only continuous compounding, we have to prove that F of zero comma T is equal to S of zero into E to the power of R into capital T. So this is what we have to prove. As a first step, assume the contrary that f of 0 comma capital T is strictly greater than s of 0 e power rt. Let us first consider this. Then the idea is to construct a portfolio in the following way. The first step is to borrow s of 0 amount of money from the, say for instance, the current market price is 1000 rupees for the underlying asset. You will borrow 1000 rupees at the time when you are issuing the contract, that is at t is equal to zero and hold it till the expiration. So this means you may be uh, shorting a say zero coupon bond at par. So let us call this as B1 because it's a riskless asset. Therefore we label it as B1. And next one is S1, which is a risky asset is by one unit of the underlying asset in the spot market whose price is S0 because S0 is the price of the underlying asset in the spot market at, at t equal to zero. Therefore, you will be paying what you have borrowed from your B1 to buy this asset S1. Now you go to the derivative. Maybe I will call this as F1 okay, because it is forward, therefore I will call it as F1, is take a short position, of course, in the forward. What it means, you find a counterpart and issue a forward contract in which you will be the seller. That is what is the short position in a forward contract or short forward position. So you agree to sell one unit in the asset for the price f of 0 comma t which is the strike price or the forward price at time t so that is the forward contract in the contract you write that you are going to sell one unit of the underlying asset at the price of f of 0 comma t okay so what is f of 0 comma t that is some number which is greater than this quantity so given r given t and given s of 0 you know what what this number is and you assumed that whatever strike price that is the forward price that you fix is something greater than this number that you have assumed okay and once you assumed this you are building a portfolio with this plan okay let us see what will happen to this portfolio the portfolio is given by pi which is equal to b1 that is the number of units that you are holding in the asset B1, capital B1, and then S1. This is the number of units you are holding in the asset, risky asset S1. And then F1. So generally, we as per the definition, we denote it by D1. But here, since we are working with forward, we will call it as F1. That is the number of units that you included in your contract, forward contract, okay? Also, if you see how you have planned your B1 is nothing but your B1 into the price of the bond, right? At time t equal to zero. The price of the bond in the secondary market at t equal to zero is equal to what? See, you are borrowing the money S0, okay? Therefore, this your B1 should be chosen in such a way that B1 into the price of your bond at t equal to zero should be S of zero. Okay, this is how you have to choose. And there is a minus sign because you are shorting, you are not 
uh, investing, but you are shorting it. Therefore, generally shorting means you will write it in negative. That is the understanding you have to have. Okay. Don't confuse it with cash flow. Generally, cash flow means when money comes to your hand, you will write it as plus. Okay. But in shorting, you always write it as negative, although it comes to your hand. Don't confuse or try to connect it with cash flow here. And what is S1? You are buying one unit in your underlying asset. Therefore, this is one. Since you are buying it, therefore, it comes with a plus sign. And what is F1? F1 is your shorting. Again, how much? One unit. Therefore, it is minus one. Okay, so this is the portfolio. Okay, so B1 is uh, some, some number which will be obtained through this equation. And then the other things are one comma minus one. Okay, what is the value of this portfolio? V of pi of zero, that is at the initial time, right? The value of the portfolio is B1 into capital B1 of zero, that is the price of the bond, plus S1, that is one, into S of zero, that is the price of, price of the underlying asset, plus, see in forward contract, the price that you have quoted is the one which you will be paying at the expiry, okay? This amount will be paid at the expiry by the buyer to accumulate this, asset right what the buyer and the seller that is the two parties will pay at the time of issuing this forward contract they don't pay any money because it's a non-contingent claim means there is no price involved while issuing this contract that is the definition of non-contingent claim and forward is a non-contingent claim therefore actually you should have price for the contract. Since you are issuing a forward contract, there is no price involved in it. Therefore, this is zero. So therefore, this is, you can see that you have chosen your B1 in such a way that B1 into this is S of zero. And since it is a shorting, it was minus S of zero. Plus, this is one. Therefore, one into S of zero is S of zero plus zero that is equal to zero. So it means the value of your portfolio at the initial time is zero, okay? So you should uh, try to see what I'm trying to contradict here, okay? If you see, we have assumed that your market is not allowing any arbitrage, okay? That is the assumption, okay? I'm slowly trying to take you towards the fact that such a portfolio, that is the, the trades that I planned here, is giving me a portfolio which will happen to be an arbitrage portfolio. The first condition of the arbitrage portfolio is satisfied. You can see that. Now let us go to the next step. Next is, what is the value of the portfolio at the expiration time, that is T equal to capital T? How will we get this? This is given by V of the portfolio at the time, capital T, that is equal to B1 into the price of the bond at the time, capital T, plus S1 into the spot price of the underlying asset at capital T, plus the payoff, that is, capital T, or F of capital T, zero comma capital T, right? You recall that you are, a, you are holding a short position in this forward. Therefore, for short, the payoff is minus of RF. Therefore, there should be a minus sign here. That will happen to be B1 into, see, you have borrowed the money, okay? So when you borrowed that money, you will be paying a interest at the rate of R per year, right? So therefore it will be continuously compounding like this, E power RT, 
okay so you will have to pay the interest continuously compounded on the initial borrowed money plus small s1 is 1 therefore it is s of t and how this is given this is nothing but your expiration that is the forward price or the strike price that you have made with your counterpart in the contract minus this is here a plus because the minus of this is given like this f of t comma t okay so that is actually so this is minus s of 0 remember this is minus f of 0 and that is now compounded continuously plus s of t plus f of 0 comma capital T minus s of t. So this goes off and you have f of 0 comma capital T minus s of 0 e power r t. So this is the value of the portfolio at the expiration time. You can see that by our assumption, that is the contrary assumption we have taken like this, right? So therefore, f of 0 comma t minus s naught into e power r t, this is, if you put a minus here, that will be greater than 0, right? So by our assumption, we see that v of pi of t that is the value of your portfolio at the expiration time is given like this and this is positive therefore this is greater than zero and you look at any of this strategy you can see that there is no risk involved in it see you will borrow money okay and put it in this stock now whatever may be the spot price of this stock at time t equal to capital t somebody has committed to buy that stock for this price, right? So irrespective to whatever may be the spot price of your stock at this level, is that risk is compensated by your forward trade, okay? And thereby, what you are doing is you are selling your forward and thereby you are obtaining this money, okay? You obtain this money, how you sold that? You already have one, one unit of your asset that you sold to the your counterpart in the forward, okay? And you obtained this money, okay? That is how this and this went off. You already hold that asset in your hand that you gave to your counterpart and your counterpart paid you this money, okay? So in that process, your complete risk is getting cancelled here. And once you get this money in hand, you pay your obligation where you borrowed this much money and you have to pay a continuous compound of this. And whatever remains is risk-free money for you. And by your assumption, it is a positive number. Therefore, this is a risk-free return. So what is the probability? Whatever may be the probability measure that you use, you can see that the probability that you get some non-zero money in hand is actually probability is one, actually, okay? Because there is no risk involved. It is a certain, okay? Somebody is going to certainly buy from you and you certainly have one volume with you, whatever may be the price of it, the person who committed to you to buy is going to buy for F of zero comma T price, okay? And once you get this payment, F of zero comma T, you will go to the, lender of your uh, initial money, you pay this much money and remaining is yours. So therefore, there is no risk involved in it. And hence, you will see that the probability of this is in fact, whatever may be the probability that you use is not very important here. This is actually one, okay? What you want is only it should be greater than zero. So therefore, pi is a arbitrage portfolio. So this is clearly a contradiction. What is the contradiction? We have assumed that the market is not allowing any arbitrage, okay? So in, in such a market, 
if you choose a forward price that is the strike price which is more than what your prevailing interest rate market provides you then you have a arbitrage because you will borrow money from your money market that is the risk free market and take this forward trade and parallelly you will buy a stock in the spot market and you will meet arbitrage in this process okay and assumption is there is no arbitrage in the market then it contradicts okay therefore your uh, forward price cannot be greater than the this quantity but it can be less than this quantity let us see now assume that f of 0 comma capital t is less than s of 0 into e power rt now what happens you can again arrive at a contradiction by constructing a arbitrage portfolio now how will you construct such an arbitrage portfolio i will just give you the plan of the portfolio i will leave it to you to write the portfolio clearly and the value of the portfolio at time t equal to zero and the value of the portfolio at time t equal to capital t and then conclude by using this condition that it is a arbitrage portfolio i leave it, leave all this to you as an exercise i will just give you the trading plan alone of course you can guess what is the trading plan it will be just the, the opposite of what we did in the previous case so first what you do is short sell one unit of the underlying asset say for a price which is denoted by s of zero okay what is mean by short selling short selling means you don't have or you don't hold that asset in hand you simply get into the market and sell it without even holding it okay that is called short selling the commitment is that at some point of time you have to buy it back you have to necessarily buy it back because you sold without having the asset in hand therefore to compensate that you have to buy it back so in our plan we will buy it back at t equal to capital the next part of the plan is invest the money so you sold it therefore you got this amount right so you invest it in a risk free interest rate something like a bond the third plan the third part of the plan is to enter into a long forward contract with the strike price f of 0 comma capital t okay our assumption is that whatever strike price you got this is less than whatever return you will get from your risk free investment that is s of 0 e to the power of rt right that is our assumption now that is this one okay so these are the three plans now you have to write the portfolio okay you write the portfolio and find the value of the portfolio at t equal to zero that is you have to find this quantity and that you show it to be equal to zero you can clearly see that you got this money right so you short it therefore it is minus in your cash flow it comes as a plus okay in the trade it is it is denoted as minus sign okay so you just have to keep that in mind then you are buying this asset therefore in this the money goes as plus okay so minus and plus gets cancelled you sold s not you got s not therefore uh, they get cancelled anyway this initially you don't pay any money therefore this will become zero then you find the value of the portfolio at t equal to capital t that is you have to find this okay so you calculate that and that will happen to be uh, this one so you have to obtain this okay uh, so it should be greater so i think you will get this plus s of 0 e power r t for this for this plan you will get the value like this so you complete all these details okay if i ask in the exam you first have to clearly write the plan and then find the initial thing and then write the uh, exit plan also 
So how are you going to exit this portfolio? That also you have to write clearly the plans like this and then find the value of the portfolio at the exit. Okay, that is if you exit as per this, what will be the return that you will get? The return you will get is this and that is greater than zero with certainty. Okay, all that you have to justify if I ask some such questions. Okay, I hope you can do this. I leave it to you as an exercise to complete this part of the proof. Let's see an example. We wish to buy a forward contract on say today. Let us assume that today is a 8th February on a stock. Let us further assume that the current market price of, of one share of the stock be 1,272 and the prevailing interest rate be 6%, right? Continuously compounding. That are, these are the given data. We have to find uh, the fair price of the contract, forward contract, for the expiration date, 30th April. Of course, assume that there is no dividend paid during this period, okay? Now, how will you do? The fair price formula is F of zero comma T is equal to S of zero E power R T, okay? The zero is taken to be the initial time, that is the 8th February, and capital T is the expiration, that is 30th April. So this T means the number of days in between these two dates, okay? And R, remember, is the annual interest rate, okay? So if you see how many days between 1st January to 30th April, you can see uh, Jan is 31, Feb is 28, right? March has 31 and April has 30, okay? So there are 120 days and therefore you have, you have to convert it into uh, year, okay? So therefore uh, you take, and similarly, for February, you have uh, say uh, Jan, in Jan, you have 31 days, and in February, you have seven days in Feb, because eight, therefore, there are 38 days. So capital T, you can take as 120 divided by 365 minus 38 divided by 365. I'm just converting it into, into years. This many years you have the forward uh, contract period, right? And what is, uh, see, this is uh, approximately, I think, 0 0.2274 in my calculation, you can see. And R is equal to 0 0.06. S of 0 is given by 1272, right? With all this, you can find the fair strike price that is forward price and that is given by f of zero comma t is uh, 1272 into e to the power of 0 0.06 into 0 0.2274 and that is uh, 1272 into e to the power of uh, 0 0.0136 and that is uh, approximately 1289.47. So that is the uh, fair price that you can uh, fix as the strike price for your forward, okay? As per this model, I mean, in practical, how will it happen? Because this model assumes many things that there is no arbitrage, and then you get very uh, easily the borrowing money or, uh, you know, lending money, right? So you are getting uh, money to borrow in time, right? So all that are uh, assumed and then you got this one. So this is just a model. Uh, for instance, uh, I have taken uh, this data for uh, Infosys. So in 
Infosys closed on 5th February at around 1272 approximately on 5th February. Okay. So if you go for an expiration, uh, April, April end expiration, uh, then uh, this is the fair price that one may quote for this uh, as per this model. If you see in future, not in forward, in future on the same day, that is 5th of February, Infosys closed at 1287, okay? So that's the price uh, in future it closed. Of course, future has a little uh, different mechanism, but the underlying idea is same as forward. We will uh, see the futures in detail in the next section. But as of now, you can just uh, see that future is also almost uh, the underlying idea is same as the forward. So you can see that uh, the model, although it's not exactly uh, catching the, the price, but it is uh, okay. And of course, uh, the prevailing interest rate that I have given is also not six. It was something like uh, the government bond is at present, I think, trading at 5.57 or 9.7, I don't know exactly. So all that, if you exactly put, maybe it will be much more closer or like that, but it's a, it's a fairly good uh, idea you get. See, you get a rough idea, that's all. You you cannot get exactly the, the price because if you are getting exact price, if you have a model which gives you exact price, it means you have, uh, no, one over the market, which is not possible, right? So therefore, uh, these all are uh, some way to estimate the price. That's all. You cannot say exactly it governs the price. 